Okay, there we go. Welcome everybody to the Warriors of Wealth five day challenge to jumpstarting your multifamily investing. My name is Stacy Conkey. I am here with Jen Conkey. Well, not here, she's not in the room yet. Um, but we are really excited to bring you this opportunity to really just jumpstart things. I remember back in 2003 when I was brand new to real estate, it just felt like it was just this monumental task to go into real estate. There was so much to learn. And there is, that hasn't changed. There's a ton to learn. There's a ton of growth you're gonna experience. But what I wanna do is I wanna spend the next five days, just one day at a time, just breaking down one core component of what you need to really jumpstart things and get things going. So that's really the purpose of this whole thing is just to, to help you launch. There's no way in five you know, short classes, I'm gonna be able to teach you everything about multifamily and that's okay. Because frankly, what you need right now is just a foundation that you can start building on, a foundation that you can start taking action on. Because when you make one move, you've taken one action, you're like, wow, I did it. Okay, I could do that. And then you have more confidence to take the next action and do that. And now you have even more confidence to take the next one. So over the next five days, we're gonna spend some time together each day. The way that we're gonna do this, it's going to be content, action content action so and we're not going to get into super super detailed stuff but i want to give you guys enough of a foundation that you can actually start making moves right away and just get that ball rolling and get the momentum rolling okay so it's going to be it's going to be awesome so i'm going to go through some content and then i'm going to give you homework each day i'm going to post the homework on the facebook group and what i want you to do is when you've done the homework i want you to do your own post on the facebook group and say homework done and just tell us like, just tell us a little bit about your experience. Like, hey, I was really nervous, but I did it. Or, oh, this was really great. And I, I knocked it out in 30 minutes. Whatever your experience is, just share with us that you did it. And let us celebrate that with you. And by us, I mean our entire community of investors, right? We should all be so excited for everybody really getting up and launching their businesses. Or for those of you who are already investing, but you're just ready to scale it to apartments, take it to the next level, awesome so we just want to celebrate every single step along the way because that just encourages you to take the next one all right so let's get started oh of course i got to figure out how to do how to get okay here we go okay so what we're going to be focusing on today is choosing a market tomorrow day two we're going to be talking about building your team day three we're going to talk about lead generation and how do you start getting leads coming in and what i mean by leads in the multifamily space, what I'm talking about is getting properties with enough financial information that we can at least run a basic financial analysis so that we know whether we even want to bother diving in and really digging into this property. Okay. Day four, we're going to go through financial analysis. So I'm going to start teaching you all the basics, the, the lingo, the language, the calculations, how to do them so that you can start being like, okay, I, I get it. I, I, I see how this is all coming together. And then day five, I'm going to teach you about how to make your first offer. Now, I am not going to push you, press you, pressure you at all to go make an offer that day. But if you get to the point where you're ready, you 100% go for it. But I'm going to teach you how so that you know what when you get to the point where you're ready to go, you at least know what that step looks like. Okay, so the five day challenge is going to go everything from picking a market, choosing your team, getting lead generation, analyzing the deal, and then making the offer. All right, so we have a lot to do in five days, and I'm excited for you guys. All right, so let's talk about choosing a market. First things first. Okay, so the three things that we're gonna be focusing on, now this is the, you know, the basic start of it, is we're gonna be looking at population trends, we're gonna be looking at employment trends, and we wanna be looking at the city's comprehensive plan, okay? So with population trends, what we're looking for is, we wanna see that we're in a market where the population is increasing not decreasing. So Jennifer and I just got off the phone with someone who's um, who's considering coming into our, one of our programs and Detroit came up. So Detroit, Michigan came up as a market and um, and we were all like, yeah, Detroit is just, Detroit's great. It's just got all this like revitalization and, and this, the river and there's all this stuff going on. But here's the reality. If you analyze the market based on the way I'm gonna show you and actually look at the data, if you're looking to hold long-term, that is not a place that has proven itself to be a good buy and hold long-term. Can you make some quick money here and there? Sure, you can do that anywhere. 
But if you're looking for long-term buy and hold, there's a very methodical way that we do that. And that's what I'm going to teach you. One of which is the population should be increasing. All right. So if you're looking at a market and you're seeing that the population has been steadily declining over the years, that's not going to be good news for you when 20 years from now you're holding your apartment building and now there's fewer renters than there were when you bought it. Does that make sense? So you want to be in a market where the actual population is actually increasing or at a minimum holding steady, but ideally increasing. Because if nothing else, people are still being born. So there should be natural growth of a population just because people keep having babies. Yes, and some people are dying, but usually more people are having babies. So there should be a natural increase anyway. So even if it's like flat steady, I'd be like, ah, it's kind of iffy. That's medium. Oh, I'm not going to knock it off right away. But if it's declining, that's a hard no. All right. And I'm going to, everything I'm teaching you right now, I'm going to give you a visual of. I'm going to do a demonstration of. Okay. So employment trends. So we want to see that the unemployment rate. Now, at the moment that we're recording this, because this is recorded, we're in the middle of going through COVID. So of course, there's tons of unemployment right now. So we have to just pull this little segment out because this is an analysis for a long-term strategy, not for a, a moment in time. Okay. So taking the COVID situation out of the mix, we're going to be looking at employment trends. If we see that steadily employment has been increasing, increasing, increasing quarter after quarter, year after year in a market, that's not really going to be a great thing when you want to have renters coming in who you feel are going to have a good chance of being employed and paying their rent. So you want to see that there are positive trends in employment, or you want to see that unemployment is going down. And there's this great spreadsheet. It's enormous, but there's a spreadsheet that's put together by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics that actually show month by month what the unemployment and the employment is in each of the metropolitan statistical areas, MSAs. All right. So I'm going to show that to you as well. That way you actually have data that you can base it on. Um, and then the city's comprehensive plan. So what does that mean? So every city has plans. Like they don't just decide one day, oh, I think we're going to do some infrastructure. Oh, I think we're going to invest here. Oh, I think we're going to do this program. Everything happens at a snail's place for one, but it all takes planning, lots of planning, lots of meetings. So every city has, they might call it something different, but it's, I'm going to call it a comprehensive plan. So it could be a five-year, 10-year, 20-year, but it talks about what are the city's plans, one, for the city and for different areas. So if you review a city's comprehensive plan, you can kind of get an idea for maybe where they're going to be doing some investing and maybe what areas might be going through some gentrification in the future because of the city's investment. So it just helps you to dial in on areas where there might be some extra opportunity. Okay, and then another thing that you can do, I'm not going to talk about it in depth in this one because we're going to talk more about building your power team. But the other thing that I do when I am choosing a market is I will also call realtors or brokers in the area and just tell them, here's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to buy a 10, 20, 30 unit, whatever I'm looking for at the time, apartment building. I want to be in a, you know, a working class area, a B or C area, no war zones. And, um, you know, I want to find out a little bit more about the city and your knowledge of it. So I can kind of get an idea of where I should start looking and then just be open to what they're saying. And you're going to talk to as many people as you can. And you're going to start feeling like, okay, I'm starting to see how it's coming together. And when they talk about what area of town, having a map up on your screen so that you can look and go, Oh, okay. Got it. The Northwest area. I see. Okay. That's the main freeway. And that's how people get around. And it really helps you to start to, to know the place you're investing. And I realize we haven't talked about this before, in this course, but one of the things that Jennifer and I are very passionate about is teaching people how to do real estate wherever it makes sense. Okay, so anything that I'm teaching you in this course or pretty much in any course at any time in the future, it's always going to be how to do that real estate remotely without getting on a plane and going and flying there. I'm not talking about meeting brokers in person, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's unnecessary. Like there's so much information that you can get just by having a phone conversation. And these days we have Zoom and FaceTime and Duo. There's all these ways to communicate face-to-face -face or just over the regular phone. So anything that I'm talking about right here, I'm just talking about doing from your desk at home without having to leave, all right? But really everything I teach you going forward will be that exact same thing, how to do it remotely. And I just realized I hadn't really set that, set that expectation or set that precedent. And for those of you who are already familiar with us, you already know that we're super passionate about helping people do that because it really does help you to create 
location freedom. It doesn't matter where your physical body is located because you can operate real estate and operate your properties anywhere from anywhere. As long as you have a phone connection or an internet connection, you're good to go. All right. So when I talk about the city's comprehensive plan, well, we'll get there in just a minute. I just wanted to lay the foundation for choosing a market, what kind of research we're going to be doing. All right. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use Google for population trends. Actually, I'm going to just do the rest of these bullet points and then I'm just going to, we're going to go off of the, the slides and go, go play out there. All right. So we're using Google for population trends and I will show you exactly what that looks like. We're going to use the Bureau of Labor and Statistics for the unemployment trends and the employment trends. Okay, and we're going to use the city website, the city of whatever city you're looking at, to find the comprehensive plan. Now, generally speaking, you want to be looking in areas that are at least 100,000, ideally, greater than 250,000 in population. As far as like the main city, there's nothing wrong with investing in a suburb of a main city, but because sometimes you'll find out you'll be drawn to an area because of the major metropolitan area. It's the one you've heard of, you know about it, you can do a bunch of research, but then you start contacting brokers and you start getting deals coming in and that might be in some of the suburbs. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with doing that. When we do this initial research, this will be based on the market itself, the larger market, the metropolitan statistical area, the MSA. All right, so, all right, let's hop off of here. Let me stop this share. All right, and... Let's go to Google. Google, okay, don't need that. All right, so when you're gonna start looking up population, we're gonna pick a city. So let's say, and just, <laughs> here's a caveat for everything in this class. Anytime I ever say a city, it is not because that's a great city to invest or it's a bad city to invest. I might use some specific example like Detroit because anyone who's been there and sees all the revitalization going on in certain areas might think, oh, that's a great market to invest. And I'm just pointing out there's data to indicate that it might not be the best fit for your strategy. But in general, if I say a market, Jacksonville or Oklahoma City or Indianapolis or Seattle, it's just an example so I can show you how to look stuff up. But I'm not making a recommendation on that. Because what you need to do is you need to go through the research and get all the data and review it and then make the decision based on your research. Okay, so there's time, there might be times that I pick a market that makes absolutely no sense, but I'm just picking them at random just to show you. Okay, so let's start off with, so you're in Google. Uh, so make sure you go to google.com because I just realized that my browser, even though I think it's set to Google, apparently is like Yahoo search which doesn't give you the same results of what I'm about to show you. So make sure you go to Google for this. So we're gonna type in oops, population. Actually, why don't we just go ahead and do Detroit since I talked about it. We'll do, I'll do a few with you so that you can just kind of see some different things. So let's say population in Detroit. Okay, so here's what we're gonna see when you pull up and you put in population in and then put in the major city. So Google gives you this kind of map thing that shows you what the population was in 1990 and what the population is now and then just kind of what the trend has been so in 1990 the population i realize i can't move my mouse over there without it shifting so i want you to just move your eyeballs because i realize if i point at the screen you can't see my finger either so move your eyeballs from where the cursor is right now straight over to the right and do you see where it says detroit 1.029 million. So in 1990, Detroit had over 1 million people in its population. All right, so over the course of time since then, the population is now at 672,000. That means the population decreased by 35% over that time. So that's not a that's not a great indicator of a market where you want to be holding long term is we don't see any indication right now that the population is starting to increase. Now, if you look back, you check back in a couple of years and all of a sudden you see starting to go up, okay, now it's a different story. But as of right now, it's not. Okay, so based on strictly data, this one would be off the list. One of the things that also comes up through these Google searches is it will oftentimes give you another city that's nearby. So in this case, Cleveland. And so sometimes you can be like, oh, I hadn't really thought of that one. Let me take a look at it. All right, so let's take a look at Cleveland. So Cleveland looks like it's a little bit on a downturn too. So it started off with 505,000 in 1990 and has steadily gone down to 383,000 
in 2018. So same thing. I'd be like, yeah, okay, maybe it might be a nice market. Maybe I'd like to visit it. But as far as holding a multifamily or any kind of long-term rental property there, it's just, it's going to be off my list. I want to be in areas where it's in an incline. All right. So let's go back to Google and let's pick up, pick out some other ones. Let's say population in Let's try Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, and we just saw Cleveland, Ohio because of Detroit. Let's try Oklahoma City. Okay. All right. So we have two different two different things showing up here. We have Oklahoma City. And we also have Tulsa. So Oklahoma City looks like it started off at four hundred and forty-four thousand. And I, I think you guys are seeing, but this is what I'm looking at right here. This is the number that's changing as I'm moving my cursor. So we started with four hundred and forty-five thousand back in 1990, and it's been Looks like it's been on a steady incline to almost 650,000 people. So we've seen a really nice steady incline. So as far as like a first line of defense and saying, would I even consider looking further into this market? Sure, I would. It has a good pop positive population increase. Now Tulsa is another market that is geographically close by. And let's see, it started off at 368,000 and it's up to 400,000. So it's gone up a tiny little bit. It seems to be a little bit more like even, but I wouldn't knock it off the list for that because it's not declining, but it wouldn't be on the top of my list. I like to see ones where like things are happening, population is continuing to increase. All right, so this is what that looks like when you're seeing an increase. Let's do another one. What other markets should you do? And if you're standing next to me, <laughs> I know you guys can't see her. St. Louis. Okay, St. Louis. Says, let's take a look at St. Louis. Population in St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, it didn't give us a, didn't give us the, oh, darn it. Okay, let's see if there's another way it wants us to look it up. Populate. St. Louis is one of those areas that's a little bit wonky on the things because they have a whole bunch of like little cities within a city. It's a little bit different. So we'll see if we can look it up another way. Oh, nope, it's not giving us the map. Okay, well, let's try a different one. How about Kansas City? Okay, there we go. All right, so most of the places have maps, but not all of them. So if you wanted to, if you were like, let's say that you were actually seriously interested in St. Louis and like, man, I just really want to find out. You just need to go and dig into the data. There's all sorts of it. I just don't usually have to because the, the things are right here. But if you want to invest somewhere and you need to see what the population increase has been, Keep in mind that we have a census, a census bureau. In fact, this is all pulled from the census bureau. They're, they have to have like tables and data and all of that. You just got to go dig in and figure out where it's at and then see that way if you don't have, if it doesn't have the map this way. Okay, so it looks like we have three different things here. We have Kansas City, interesting, Omaha, and Kansas City again. I'm guessing that Kansas, one is Kansas City, Missouri, and one's probably Kansas City, Kansas. All right, so here, right here, we're starting off with. 435,000 people in 1990, and we're at 491,000. So it's been you know, a little bit of an incline over the years. Interestingly enough, Omaha, which really wasn't even on our radar, is had quite a bit of an increase. So that started off at 358,000 in 1990, and it's been going up, and it's now at 468,000. So let's say I was doing some research for Kansas City, and I was like, oh, Kansas, okay, yeah, that's okay. Omaha, what's going on with Omaha? Now, I haven't done any further research to know whether Omaha is a good rental market. Like, I don't know whether the numbers even work there. Maybe the rents are not that high compared to the prices, but maybe they are. This would be a situation where I look at that and go, huh, let me go ahead and just write it down. And as I do the rest of my research, maybe I'll come across a market that, frankly, I really hadn't even thought about. Okay, so this is what this part of the research looks like. As you can see, it's really, really quick. Now, it's probably quicker for me just because I've been doing it for a while. I can quickly, you know, pick out areas. If you're just stumped on, like, I don't even know where to start, let me teach you my trick. I tend to be overly analytical at times, and that doesn't really serve us, frankly, when you're just trying to get started. I'm gonna teach you some of the hacks that I've used to help me, like, get going. All right. so. When you, if you just don't even know where to start at all, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna start picking a couple of random places, pick a couple of states, maybe four or five states, and then go look and, and Google what are the 
largest by population, like what are the largest cities in blah. So let's say Nebraska. Okay, so I'll just walk you through. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I'll just show you what I do. So for those of you who are like super, super analytical and everything has to be exactly right before you'll make a move, trust me, you gotta let that go because it doesn't serve you. The time that that, I shouldn't say let it go, let it go for right now. Where that's gonna come in, in handy and it's gonna serve you so well is when you get to the point in the business where you're actually in a deal and you're in due diligence. But you gotta take that part of your personality and pull it out of you and go stick it in the shoebox, put your foot on top of it, and you gotta go into like go get her, go get her mode. Things don't have to be perfect. You have to create momentum, otherwise nothing will happen. And then when you get your first deal under contract, that's when you pull back, slow down, and bring out your super analytical side. That's when it really serves you. All right, so let's say I said Nebraska. So let's say I'm like, I don't, I'm terrible at geography. Like, what are the main cities in Nebraska? I have an idea, but let's just say largest cities in Nebraska. Okay. Now, here's one thing about <laughs> Googling largest cities. It could mean, depending on what website you pull up, they could be talking about geographically largest cities. So just be aware of that. Make sure that you're looking at the population. So pick up, pull Wikipedia. I'm not gonna making any purchase decisions based on Wikipedia, but I can at least help to narrow something down. Okay, so based on what I'm seeing here, there's really only two markets I would even bother looking into. Omaha, which is one of them, which is what came up on our, our Google search before, and then Lincoln. Based on the size of them, and both of them have been increasing, I wouldn't be focusing on these smaller ones because the populations are just, they're small, right? We want to have at least 100,000, ideally 250,000, so there's a lot of buyers for our product. And for us, of course, we're not talking about buyers, buyers, we're talking about renters, but we want to make sure there's a lot of people who want what we have, what we have to offer. Okay, so that's how I would look it up. And then if I was like, okay, so let me put those two on my list. Then you come back to Google Map and pick your next one. Okay, how about Tennessee? Largest cities in Tennessee. All right, well, that wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but let's see if we can find something that's a little bit more like a chart. Largest cities in Tennessee, let's see what that looks like. Oh, those are images, web. World Atlas, let's try this. Oh, I just saw one that had population data. Okay, this one doesn't have it. Okay, the five most populated cities in Tennessee. Okay, well, I mean, since this is pretty much serving the question we're asking, which is population, we could work with this. Here's one thing that you guys are gonna learn about real estate, if you're not already in real estate, you gotta get really comfortable with just looking stuff up. Like, uh, well, I don't know the answer to that question. Let me see what Google has to say. Let me click on this link, let me click on that link until you find the answer, um, especially if you're ever going through any kind of training. And I know this is the case for me. I've had to really become good at this. You expect, because you're being told about how things work, sometimes you expect that everything is just like, okay, here you go and here's the answer, where really what serves you is learning how to think differently, how to think like an investor, how to, how to go find the information that you need because you're not always gonna have someone there to just hand it to you, All right? So just like getting on and Google and being willing to dig through things is a great skill to develop if that's not something you feel naturally inclined to do. All right, which it wasn't for me, but now like I, I'm like the computer tech person in our house now, even though I knew nothing about computers, mainly because every time I would get stuck on something, I would go to YouTube and I would watch some videos and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I know how to do it. So it's just the research function that really helps you to, to grow in whatever you're trying to learn. All right, so Nashville looks like it's the largest, has estimated population of 667. So from a population standpoint, it's like, okay. Memphis, 650,000. Knoxville, 186,000. So all three of these from a strictly size standpoint would work. You got Chattanooga at 177 and Clarksville at 150. So all these are at least over 150,000. So you could say, okay, I'll put those on my little spreadsheet or on my list. And then let me go Google and see like what the population trend has been on that. Okay. So that's just, if you're stuck on where to even start, just pick five states, look up the biggest cities in there, and then just start there. I don't want you guys getting stuck in uh, analysis paralysis. All right, so that's the population side of it. Now, the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at the employment trends. All right, so there's, I already pulled it up before we started. 
here's the website. You're going to want to write it down. It's bls.gov forward slash LAU forward slash Metro SSA dot htm. So bls.gov. Actually, I will copy it real quick and put it in the chat for those of you who are live with us here. Oops. Okay, there we go. <laughs> JJ, you're funny. Okay. Um, and Teresa, you had asked the question, how far back do we typically look? I, I just pull up the, the sheet that, or the, the chart that Google pulls up, which is goes back to 1990. I don't go back further than that. I'm just looking to see like what's happened over the past 20, 30 years or so. Okay. So just so that you guys know, if you click in, if you do anything in chat, I won't see it right now until I get to the very end. So, okay. Um, and sorry that you just spent all that time writing, Jason. I was just trying to torture you because it's fun. <laughs> and I know you like it. <laughs> All right, so here we are. This is the local area unemployment statistics for the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. So once you're at this sheet right here, if you just scroll down to the bottom to where it says downloadable data files, I am recording, yes. <laughs> and then come over here to where it says zip. Now, this is table one civilian labor force and un unemployment by metropolitan area, seasonally adjusted. You wanna make sure it's this one, not unemployment by selected metropolitan area because it might be that the area you're looking at isn't in there. Now, okay, so I'm gonna pull that. So you would basically click on zip. It's gonna allow you to download the zip file. I'm not gonna do that because I've already done it, but I am gonna share with you what that looks like when we get to that part. All right, change my screen share. Okay, so when you download it, this is what the file looks like. Now, it's enormous. Now, these actually were not there before. All it is is this. It's just that I've used this file to break out some information. Um, but it has just, I mean, never ending, it seems, data. So I want to show you just kind of how to navigate around a little bit in that. So let's say that I want to do, well, let's do Omaha. So I'm going to use my edit find, and if you don't know how to do your find function in Excel, make a note that you need to go YouTube, I said Google, but YouTube how to find in Excel, okay? Like these are the little things and it will save you so much time to learn how to do that. It's actually super, super simple, but if you don't know how to do it, go watch a video, learn how to do it, and then it'll make your research go faster. Okay, so I'm gonna find Omaha, okay. All right, and it looks like it's the right one. So the thing about this spreadsheet is there are sometimes places that have the same name, but in multiple states. So you do need to double check. So there could have been like Omaha, Oregon, if that was, which I don't think there is one, but if there is an Omaha, Oregon, it would have something with OR and I'd be like, oh wait, that's the wrong state. Let me go, let me like scroll down past this section and then start again. Okay, so this is just the way I normally do it. So I'll, I'll, I'll click on the plus just to create a blank spreadsheet. I'll come back here and I'm just going to highlight this whole section. So if you see, it starts off in 1990. And basically it's, so it's, it's month one in 1990. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, blah, 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 all 1990. Then it goes to 1991. So this is going to be a lot of data. Probably don't need all of this, but I'll just show it to you anyway. So we're going to Start here and we're gonna go all the way until we get down to the end of Omaha. It's probably gonna be like 2018. Oops. Because what we're looking for it right now is trends. Okay. So we don't, since we don't have current, oh, we actually have oh, it actually is pretty current. It's November 2019. Okay, that's cool. So I'm just gonna copy this. Again, if you don't know how to copy, YouTube that. All right, so I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna move it to my blank sheet. Paste it, make it a little bit wider. I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna go grab my, my row that has like what the categories are, what the columns are so that I know what I'm even looking at. Let me paste that. Okay, 
So what I'm looking at here is, so this is still Omaha, right? This is the, the area and this is over time. I wanna look at maybe the last 10 years or so. And maybe Teresa, maybe that's what you're asking. I'm not sure if you're asking about the timeline on how far back. Okay, so if we're at 2019, let's go back to like 2009. Okay, so this is the unemployment rate in 2000, January 2009. So what we're looking for is we're just, as we're scrolling down, we wanna see that over the course of time that the unemployment rate has improved. And of course improved and unemployment means it's going down. So let's take a look at what that, what that looks like. So it looks like it, actually I'm just looking here a little bit. So we see 2007, it was only three, 2008, it was starting to go up to four, 2009, it was going up to five. So that makes sense because that was the time that we went through like that massive real estate crash or the entire economy crashed. And so unemployment went up in a lot of places. All right, so that makes sense. All right, so look down. So we got, we're in the fives. All right, and it's in the four, mid fours. So it looks to be going down. Now it's in the low fours. Now it's in the high threes, mid threes. Now we're at, look, 2015. Okay, so where it looks like it's so far, it's going well. Let's just see if it keeps going. Now it's in the low threes. Now it's at three. Now it's down in the high twos. And we're in 2018. So overall, and then it went up to three and three point three and three point one. So overall, what you're seeing is an overall positive employment trend. Because the unemployment was steadily going down over the course of time. Now the fact that this went from 2.9 to 2.8 back up to 3.0, 3.1. I'm not super concerned because that's not a big change, but I would be like, well, I mean, I wonder what's kind of what's, what's going on. It was doing well. Then for a few months it went, you know, it went up one and then went up another one and another one. So I might be like, well, let me just ask if this ended up being one of the markets I was interested in based on my other research, it'd be a question that I would ask when I called and talked to someone from the city or talking to some realtors like, Hey, you know, economically, how is the area doing? Because this really isn't a big change, but it's just the fact that it was a little bit, it's going a little bit the other way when it had been so steadily decreasing. But, you know, in 2017, it was three. So overall, it's not a big change, but it looked like it was getting better and then it started getting just a little bit worse. All right, so that's Omaha. Let's pick one more. Where should we pick? How about... How about let's try Kansas City and see how Kansas City is looking from that standpoint. Kansas City. Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, so the interesting thing about Kansas City is, remember, these are not cities in this spreadsheet. These are metropolitan statistical areas, which oftentimes encompass multiple cities. Uh, it's it's almost like it's like the city and all of the little of the little suburbs within it are in a metropolitan statistical area. So that's really hard to say five times fast. I realize it's even hard to say one time fast. But anyway, if you're ever finding that you can't find the city that you're interested in, and let's say it's not like it's not a main hub, you might then have to do the extra step of going to Google and saying, what MSA does blah, blah, blah city belong in, or what MSA is this city in, and then find out what, what MSA it's in, and then go look up the MSA here. Okay, so that's just an extra step that you might have to do if the city you're researching isn't a large, large one. All right, so we have Kansas City. Let's go ahead and copy that information. Okay, at the end of it, it goes kind of quick on you. Okay, so let's copy that. Let's start a new sheet. I'm gonna paste it. Let me go back and get my code at the top. Okay. So the other thing that you can see is the civilian labor force and the um, employment, and then the unemployment as numbers. I just find that from your eye standpoint, because all of the stuff that we're doing right now is intended to be quick, quick decisions. I'm taking a much longer in showing you how to do it because I'm explaining as we go. But in reality, I'm only spending a couple of minutes to just say, okay, yes, it's positive trend or oh nope negative trend and just yes no yes no I'm, what I'm looking to do is take my list from 10 or 20 markets and narrow it down to just a couple that I can actually then really dig into okay so we got our unemployment rate 
So let's go down and start at 2010 again. So we're talking a little bit more recent. Okay, ouch. Okay, so in, ooh, 2009 was even worse. Ouch, okay. So in 2010, we were at 8.8. .8. Okay, so let's just see how are we, you know, how are we doing over time? Went down to seven, down to six, down to five, down to four, down to three, now in the low threes. Okay, so this particular MSA has been just steadily decreasing. It looked like it went up a little bit, 3.2 to 3.3 to 3.4, and then started going back down again, 3.3, 3.2, 3.1. Now, also just keep in mind that these are snapshots of time based on a day in a month. But the nice thing is you have it every month, which is why I wasn't too concerned about Omaha because it was a, a fairly short amount of time, and since it's a snapshot in time. But it does give you, you know, a nice way to look at the trends of it. If you're really um, into like Excel and Excel nerding out on this, I'm not going to go into it because I, I don't want people to be like, I don't know how to do that and freak out because you, you can actually just really see from here. But if you, you're really good in Excel and you're like the visual, you can always take this data and create like a visual chart if you, if you like doing that. All right. So just so you know, that's what's possible. All right. So that's what you're going to do is so starting with the Google making sure the population trend is good. If the population is, trend isn't good, I'm not bothering to go on to this next step. That's the whole point. The whole point is to create, it's like a funnel. Start with 20 markets and go down until you have a, a couple that you're gonna really dig in and start doing some lead generation and power team building in. All right. Okay, anyway, the lighting is horrible at this time of day in my office, but what are we gonna do? Okay, anyway, so that's what, we, that's what we're doing for that. Let me get back to our PowerPoint, oops, there we go. All right, so let's talk about your homework. Okay, when you're doing like full on research, when you are like seriously going into I'm ready to buy mode, I would start with like 20 markets. I would not limit yourself at all because you want to have like a nice range of properties to choose from. For the purpose of the homework for this, I want to give you something that you can do and that you could do today, really in the next hour or two, so that you have it for tomorrow and then you're done. So we're gonna keep the homework small, but it will be enough to like get you going, get you going on the websites, get you some practice. Don't be frustrated if things don't come to you as quickly as I'm showing you. It's because I have years and years and years of clicking around on these things. But the first time I ever do anything, I'm like, wait, where did they click again? So just know that's totally normal and it's 100% fine. Be patient with yourself. Take the time and do it. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to choose three major markets and I want you to do population research and record your findings. So what I mean is you can, I mean, you could just do something as basic as write down the city name, write down the population in 1990 and write down the population in 2018. Okay, or you could just say, you know, uptrending. You can kind of do it whatever way you want, but the whole, whole point is to get you practicing doing that. Okay, so pick three major markets and do that. And then what I also want you to do is I want you to go do that employment research and record findings. If one of the markets you pick happens to be on a decline for population-wise, then just pick a couple more markets. Pick, go ahead and go through enough markets until you have three that have positive trends. You'll find that a lot of them have had positive trends. So I want you to actually do the employment research on three major markets. So if your population one doesn't produce a viable yes, go ahead and just pick another one until you have three that you can practice doing that employment research on, okay? That's all I want you to do for today, just get you in the, the practice of doing it. And um, you know, and if you have questions tomorrow, we can, we can go through that. Oops, screen sharing has stopped. All right, I'm gonna go into the chat real quick. Okay. Oh, Charmaine, I want to do Kansas City. I'm from Kansas City. Okay. Um, so here's the deal, Charmaine. Uh, as long as when you're doing your research for Kansas City, it produces what you want. And I realize I probably, I guess I might have hit on that all pieces, but you go do the research and you make sure. I don't ever want you guys doing or choosing a city simply because you live there or have lived there or because you know people there. It's fine for that to be on your list because of that but it shouldn't be something that drives a decision because everything that we do, we work through teams. You're the CEO, you're not the doer anymore. I mean, you're doing a lot of stuff, but you're the CEO. And being the CEO means you're leading teams to do things, but you have to have all the knowledge. 
So don't ever get stuck on any one area because you live there, because you're familiar with it, because you're not as familiar as you think from a real estate standpoint. Uh, but there's also nothing wrong with doing it there. Just look at other markets too so that you're making an informed decision. And Jeff, yes, it's going to be recorded. It's going to be in the units section, so no worries. Um, okay, and Jason, how did you get it to show by city instead of year? Mine looks different. Okay, I'm going to pull it up real quick. Okay, so this is, this is what downloads from... Oh, I, I realize if I pull up the other one, you won't be able to see it. This is what downloads straight from the other one. JJ, if you're dealing with a Mac, it might come a, a little bit different, but it should, it should show you area. The other thing I could do for you guys, give me one second. Let me see. Okay, John, can I show you access the Excel file that you missed on the website where you grabbed that file? Oh, you want me to show you on the website? Yes, I will do that. Okay. One sec, let me stop sharing. Okay, so on the website, so this is the Bureau of Labor Statistics website. So you just scroll down to where it says downloadable data files, and then it's over here on the right. Okay, um, another thing that I could do, JJ, is I will have to do this. Uh, when I post this, I will look for the link, but um, JJ, I did have somebody, oh, I just realized, I don't know that I showed that to you. Thank you. I didn't share my screen. <laughs> I just like, wait, where the, where'd you guys go? Okay. Let me try that again. Okay. So we're at the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I'm going to scroll down to where it says downloadable data files right here. And then it's the zip file right there. That's why you download it. Uh, what I'll do is when I, when I save this document or this document, this video, in the units section, which I'm going to do, I will also put a link, and JJ, this might solve your problem. I don't know why it's coming across different on your computer, but um, I will put a link to where I downloaded that into Google Sheets, because I had somebody that didn't have Excel in one of my courses. So I actually have it in Google Sheets, so I'll put a link to that Google Sheets in the, the area under the unit so that you can access it that way and see if it will show up for you better that way. All right, um, how I exported employment data and for multifamily, the metro areas are a little different. Okay, so a couple things. So Dio, um, how I ex exported the employment data, let me go back real quick. So you guys can still see the screen, right? Okay, so you're gonna click on zip. And that, I don't know that you can see anymore on my computer, what will happen is in the bottom left part of your computer, it will have a little folder. It'll blink for a while because it takes a while for it to download because it's a lot of information. And then you click on that folder and open it up and then the Excel file will actually be in there. Good question. All right, and then Steve asked, for multifamily apartments, the metro areas are a little different than duplexes, et cetera, correct? Actually, no, they're exactly the same. Um, the metropolitan statistical areas are geographic in nature. They actually have nothing to do with real estate whatsoever. It's just that we apply that data and that information to our real estate purchases. So frankly, Steve, the, the research you've already done, if you already did all this market research, will hold still for this. Although it's probably good because it might have been a little while since you did it. I would just go ahead and like pick a few new markets and you know and do it again, unless you're just going to go deep in the, mar in the market that you're in. But I would suggest doing that, but the, it's the same exact way, whether you're doing it for a duplex, a fourplex, or a hundred unit apartment building. All right, I'm gonna go jump back to the chat. Okay, you're not sharing your screen. Oh yeah, thank you, John. <laughs> thank you for all of you who are letting me know that I wasn't sharing my screen. I couldn't see your comments. Okay. Oh, okay, so, um, JJ, what Kimberly's saying is that she just downloaded the zip file. She does have a Mac and it looks the same, but it's not sorted by cities or MSAs. I think you're going to need to sort. Actually, you know what? I might have already done that. And that might be what you're seeing. That actually might be what I say. Let's, okay, let's do this real quick. Can you guys see? Let me see if I can share my screen. Can you guys see that right now, uh, that file explorer? 
If not, I'm just gonna, I'll reshare. Thank you for whoever's letting me know. Chat. Our chat thing is not showing up. So I see that you, you answered, but I can't actually see what it says, so. Okay, oh, okay, I see what it is. So in this particular case, so presumably you guys can see this. Let me just do it one more time so I can make sure. Okay, got it. Kimberly, this is what you're talking about. It, it came like this. That is that is correct. That probably is how it's going to be. So let me show you guys one other thing. The thing that's going to make you nuts is I can't do a whole lesson on teaching you how to do this if you don't know how, but I'm going to, I'll do it. It'll be recorded so you can watch me. But if you've never done like sorting in Excel before, you might need to watch some YouTube videos and just practice getting comfortable with it. Um, but like I said, the link that I gave you for the um, Google uh, Google Sheets one, it will be sorted already. So if nothing else, you guys can just go there. Um, but if you click right here on row three, oops, all right. So click on row three and then you're gonna come and you're gonna do sort or filter. I'm gonna put in a filter. It sometimes takes a couple times in this, I think just this document is so huge. Normally this works first time every time on any other document, but this one I've had some challenges with which is why I'd, I'd forgotten I saved the one that I had sorted because it took me a couple times to do it. But if you pick, check, uh, click right here where it says area on the little down thing and do sort A to Z. Okay, cool, it did it that time. Then it puts it in alphabetical order by city. And now you have all the data together. Thank you, Kimberly, for telling me that I did not realize that it wasn't showing up like that. Okay. Oh, there's my chat. Okay, cool. Nice. Yes, I did. Okay. Okay, JJ, is that what, that's what it was. That's what you're seeing. Boom. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So sorry, guys. I'm just reading the chats before, before I answer. Okay. So, um, Ali C. Sorry, I was late to the call, but I believe you get the gist of it. You said I'll be uploading some things that are units. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is on the um, in the units tab of the group, I'll be uploading each of these days one day at a time um so we have the people who if they couldn't make it they can still get the the opportunity to participate in the challenge and get the information later um but that also you can go back and reference it because i know sometimes the first time you see it you're like yeah that makes sense and then when you go to do it you're like uh what <laughs> so it will be there and i will put the link to this document this ssa ssa ma tab um in google sheets in the unit section as well so that you could reference it. All right, very good. So let's let's swap back to our PowerPoint. All right, oops. All right, and there it is. So this is your homework for today. So tomorrow we'll be meeting same time, same place. Um, so come to it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask you, have you done it, but, or maybe I will in the chat, but this is what I want you to do. It's totally doable. And if you do this today, then by tomorrow, you'll be ready for the next step and you can just slowly methodically start moving forward. Please go back and report once you've finished your homework in the chat, in the group, so everyone can celebrate with you and also be encouraged to go for it too. And I will look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow at noon Pacific. I see there are three more chats. I'm gonna open it up real quick, just in case there's anything left. Will I post this video today? Yes, Jeff, I'm actually gonna do it as soon as it is done downloading from Zoom. I will let it download and then I will upload it in the page. And then I will see you guys tomorrow. And I look forward to hearing how everybody has made that next step. So anyway, guys, I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. Have an amazing Monday and We'll see you then. Bye.